So uh, we stopped here. Uh, we saw that x of x is just a constant time, sine mu x, and it has to satisfy the other boundary condition. Well, let's plug it here. So we will get C2 times sine mu L equals zero. Of course, I don't want C2 to be zero because if C2 is zero, then again, we would get uh, the zero solution. Uh, so we see that uh, to avoid getting the trivial solution uh, we must have uh, okay sine mu times l must be zero well mu is a constant l is another constant sine of this should be zero well that is Possible only if sine, uh, sorry, mu times L is a multiple of pi. Uh, this implies uh, mu times L is equal to an integer times pi. Okay, n is an integer. The only way to obtain a non zero solution. Okay, well. Uh, from this we see what uh, of course uh, mu has to be uh, so mu is just uh, n pi over l okay and uh, x of x would be just a constant times sine mu x sine mu x mu is just n pi over l x okay uh yes and what about uh so we have obtained uh x uh, of x actually x i should maybe uh, write this as x n of x okay because for each integer I have a solution and sine n pi x over l and from well should I take zero if I take zero I get just the zero solution uh, so we should maybe start from one should I take negative numbers if I take negative integers I will get just minus right that my uh, sign minus sign goes out uh, so I will get negative of uh, these solutions i will put a constant in front of it anyway so there is no you know point put taking n to be a negative integer because negative integers are just counted uh, you know in positive integers uh, you just plug a minus sign uh, in front of the function so n should be one two three and so on okay these are the only interesting solutions Okay, well, my u and x t had two parts, x, uh, right, sorry, this has two parts, okay, and uh, the equation was this, x double prime over x, 1 over alpha squared, t prime over t equals minus lambda, lambda is just uh, minus n pi over l. Therefore, uh, we have this gadget. Okay. All right. So for each n, okay, for each n, lambda is this constant. Uh, lambda, sorry, lambda is mu squared sorry lambda is mu squared so this is minus mu squared uh, so it is just what uh, minus n pi over l 
squared okay yeah we have to be careful here uh, and this constant works for both x and t okay so if i label this solution by x n uh, maybe i should also label uh, everything related to that by uh, you know subscript n so this is mu n uh, mu n and then i have lambda n and i have corresponding t n okay now for t and t we have the equation what it is just minus sorry t prime plus lambda squared uh, and then mu n squared t equals zero t n t n okay right lambda squared sorry uh, minus mu n squared times alpha squared uh, times t n and then i take them to the other side so this is what i get okay well what kind of equation this is a uh, actually separable equation let me write it this way it's a function of t so this is just okay uh, minus uh, alpha squared mu n squared uh, t n uh, maybe yeah let me write tn here and dt here okay right this is dtn over dt i take dt to the other side and tn to this side so this is what i get and then we do what we integrate both sides and we obtain ln tn is equal to minus alpha squared mu n squared t plus a constant and from this we see that tn of t is just uh, let's say this is c prime e to the power c prime is just c times e to the power uh, alpha squared minus alpha squared mu n squared t okay and uh, u n x t would be just x n of x and t and t uh, x n also had a constant c2 this thing has also a constant so in particular i have just a constant uh, okay let me say yeah c n times uh xn was what sine let me check xn was sine n pi x over l sine n pi x over l and tn is just e to the power minus alpha squared what is mu n mu n is just uh mu n where was it uh, n pi over l so it's squared and uh, is n squared pi squared over l squared so uh, n squared pi squared over l squared t okay let me write one more time this is just a constant times sine n pi x over l times e to the power minus uh, alpha and pi over l squared t and from one up to infinite they are only integers okay they take integer values all right so then what i obtained solutions uh, which can be written as a product of a function of x and a function of t uh, let's 
uh, go back to the our original problem. So our uh, heat problem was what? Where this u uh, x x sorry alpha squared u x x equals u t. But let me write it this way. And then I had uh, the boundary value problem, a uh, boundary condition, u x zero sorry zero t equals zero. Uh, L T equals zero and U uh, X zero equals F of X. Boundary conditions and initial temperature distribution. You see, the first three equations are homogeneous. Okay, I have zero, zero, zero. So that's the observation. The first three equations are. Uh, homogeneous okay and you see that uh, the okay first three okay equations are homogeneous and thus and thus any solution solution of the first uh, three equations uh, ya da şöyle diyeyim thus any linear combination any linear combination of the uh, solutions of the first three equations is also a solution right I have many solutions u1 xt that u1 satisfies this equation satisfies this boundary condition and this boundary condition they are both they are all homogeneous therefore a multiple of this is a solution plus c2 times this is a solution some of these two solutions is a solution and so on i can take uh, you know, series solutions like this. In particular, in particular, any sum of the form uxt, which is just 1 to infinity, cn uh, unxt. So it is uh, what? Cn times e to the power minus alpha and pi over L squared t times sine uh, and pi over Lx is the solution. of the uh, first uh, three equations. That's the boundary value problem actually, right? I uh, do not consider the initial temperature distribution yet, uh, just the boundary conditions and the equation, the first three equations. So heat equation, equation plus boundary conditions okay uh, of course you know this is a solution provided that provided that 
you know, this infinite sum, the infinite sum is meaningful. But I mean, I mean, it has to be convergent and I should be able to take its derivative and plug into the equation and so on, right? There are several issues to be considered. If everything goes fine, then this infinite uh, sum would be a solution of the heat equation together with the boundary conditions, homogeneous boundary conditions. Well, assume uh, it is like that. Uh, so, uh, what about what about the initial temperature distribution, initial condition? So this is the initial temperature distribution. Uh, what was that? It was u x zero equals f of x for all x between zero and l. Let's see what we have. Okay, uh, I will plug t equals zero in this expression. When I plug t equals zero, I get e to the power zero, and e to the power zero is just one. So I will get infinite sum cn times sine n pi x over l. So we get uh, f of x u x zero summation from one to infinity c and e to the power minus uh, minus alpha n pi over l squared times zero sine n pi x over l so this is just one so we get what and from one to infinity cn times sine n pi x over l equals f of x so this is what we get Okay, now, uh, so, one has to, you know, figure out what CNs are from this equation, okay? We, of course, expect to get a unique solution. Why is that? You know, this is a physical problem. You have a metal object, you heat it up, and then you put uh, two ice cubes, big ice cubes, to both ends of this bar, so that the two ends of the bar are kept at temperature zero and then you'll just let you know uh, you, uh, you know the temperature change in the bar right uh, since this is a physical problem we expect you know the solution uh, to be unique right if you repeat this experiment you should get the same uh, result otherwise you know that wouldn't be sign science right i mean if you uh, keep getting different uh, results then uh, you know something is wrong that's not science okay so uh, to get a unique solution of course one has to compute c ends uniquely okay to obtain a unique solution for the uh, you know heat uh, equation let's call it star
So this problem, we expect to get a unique solution. Heat equation demeyim de heat problem. Uh, equation uh, is just the partial differential equation. Problem is the one with equation and then boundary conditions and initial condition, all of them. Uh, one, uh, you know, C ends should be uniquely determined. from the above equation. Okay, so from this equation, one has to compute CNs, okay? Well, uh, this is done actually uh, more than 200 years ago uh, by Joseph Fourier. Uh, and the theory is known as, uh, you know, Fourier theory or F Fourier series, Fourier transform. Uh, it's a very important, actually, uh, theory, and it has, uh, you know, it is widely used. Uh, for uh, today, you know, the information technology, uh, like, you know, cell phones, Wi-Fi, they all depend on this uh, you know, uh, theory. Uh, it's the main theory. And uh, actually, uh, how, you know, good the uh, system is. For example, we had first uh, cell phones and then we had, you know, 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G. Uh, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, getting a better uh, way of uh, communication. Uh, so uh, just depends how fast you can actually compute these constants, okay? Uh, uh, so the uh, methods which gives us, you know, quick ways of obtaining these constants uh, actually uh, results in better you know, communication technologies. Uh, but the theory, as I said, is, you know, old. It's like, you know, uh, 200 years old, more than 200 years old. And uh, I will start actually uh, that theory now. Okay. So uh, that is 10.2 Fourier series. So uh, I uh, stop at this point, right? Uh, we will uh, find a way obtaining this constant. Uh, but keep in mind that, you know, this gadget looks like uh, actually expressions in linear algebra, right? I have a vector which is written as a combination of some other vectors, let's say basis vectors, and you need to compute this constants, right? If these are, for example, basis vectors for some vector space, uh, then this equation would give us uh, CNs uniquely, right? And we will see that actually uh, what's happening is exactly this. Okay, so so this theory is, as I said, developed by Joseph Fourier. And uh, the work uh, he has done uh, in the years 18. 07 and 1811. So uh, he has done, I guess, several works uh, published in these years. Okay. So what's a Fourier series? A Fourier series. 
uh, is a series of the form series of function functions of the form constant term a0 over 2 and then non-constant terms from 1 to infinity am some constant time cosine cosine m pi x over l plus bm sine m pi x over l okay uh, where uh, a0 am and bm are constants so a Fourier series is this okay okay now uh, one important thing is the following uh, these functions since they have you know just uh, sine and cosine terms and they are periodic uh, the whole sum uh, you know uh, could be can be periodic and we will see that it is actually real the case uh, note that Note that sine, cosine x and uh, sine x are periodic with period 2 pi. So if I have uh, these expressions, uh, thus cosine let's say uh okay uh alpha not alpha let's say a t a x and sine a x are periodic with period uh two pi over a right since I have uh, a in front of x, the period uh, changes from 2 pi to 2 pi over a. Hence, cosine m pi x over l and sine m pi x over l are periodic. period 2 pi over this number here a is just m pi over l right so if it is a x then period is 2 pi over a here a is m pi over l so period would be just m pi over l so that is just uh, l over uh, 2 m no sorry 2l over m yes pi is are gone l comes up so this is what we get well uh what we see is then you know uh, all these functions have different periods but uh a multiple of a period is also a period right so if i want a common period for all of them because you know uh, if I want uh, the period of this function you know uh, that period should be uh, should work for all of them uh, and for all of them what is that common period well multiples of these so for the first function the period is 2L. For the second one, it is 2L over 2, and then 2L over 3, and so on. Right? I want a common period. Multiples of these are also periods. So 
two times this is a period, three times this is a period for the corresponding functions, and we see that two L is then a common period for all of them, right? Uh, hence, the series series a zero over two. This is constant function. It is periodic with any period, right? Uh, and then here m from one to infinity. A m cosine m pi x over l plus b m. Sorry, sine m pi x over l. R uh, the series is periodic. with period, uh, let's say t uh, equals to l over m, sorry. Yeah, that actually is 2l over m. OK. Uh, Efendim? Uh, evet, evet, haklısın. Tamam. 2L diyeceğim sadece. Tamam. Okay. Peki. Uh... Şimdi e, şöyle düşünebiliriz. E, bu periyodik fonksiyonlar uzayının e, daha doğrusu bu uzay mı? E, kümesinin bir vektör uzayı olduğunu söyleyebiliriz. E, not that not that the e, set of all uh, yeah, the, the collection, the, the collection of all uh, functions, functions uh, with period two L is a vector space. Uh, stay V diyeyim. Yani V neymiş? Fonksiyonları düşünüyorum. Ee, R'den R'ye ama e, bunlar periyodik. Yani X artı 2 L eşittir F of X. Tamam mı? For all X in R. Bunun bir vektör uzayı olduğunu söylemek istiyorum. Tüm fonksiyonların uzayı zaten bir vektör uzayı. Dolayısıyla bu aslında bir vektör subspace olmalı. Bu niye bir vektör uzayı olur? Ee, i̇ki tane eleman alalım. Let f n g in v and c1 c2 in uh, r. Then bakalım c1 times f plus c2 times g de v'nin içinde mi? x artı 2 l koyayım. Bu neye eşit? Bu c1 çarpı f of x plus 2 l plus c2 times g of x plus 2l ama f ve g periyodik olduğu için 2l ile bu c1 f of x artı bu da c2 g of x olacak. Yani e, c1 e, f plus g2 g eksi eşit Bu da ne demek? C1F plus C2G de V'nin içinde. Yani tüm vektör özür dilerim. Tüm real value fonksiyonların oluşturduğu vektör uzayının bir alt uzayı. Hence V is a subspace of all 
subspace of the vector space of vector space of all uh, real valued functions from R uh, to R. Yani real valued deyince gerçi iki kere söylemiş oldum ama neyse. Tamam. Peki e, bu vektör uzayının e, tabii ki bazı var. Her vektör uzayının bazı var. E, ama biz yani e, rastgele bir baz istemiyoruz. Hani işimize yarar bir baz istiyoruz. Hatta yani işte bu fonksiyonlar e, bir şekilde yani sinüs m pi x ve kosin m pi x o bazın içine girsin istiyoruz. E, onun için şöyle bir şey yapacağız. Önce bir inner product tarif edeceğiz. And inner product on v Yine product'ta şöyle tarif edecek. Muhtemelen bunu lineer cebirde görmüşsünüzdür ama şöyle olsaydı mesela Rn'i düşünseydim ve Rn olsaydı iki tane vektör aldığımda işte diyelim ki V1 Vn U aldım U1 Un bu ikisinin Standart inner product'ı nasıl bir şeydi? Şuydu değil mi? V1 U1 artı işte V2 U2 artı Vn Un. Yani toplam e, K 1'den N'e kadar e, Vk Uk. Peki e, fonksiyonlara gelince nasıl yapacağız? Bakın şurada e, şu notasyonu düşünürseniz hani vk'yi bunu sanki fonksiyon gibi görüp şöyle yazayım. uk'yi de yine böyle yazayım. Burada v ve u'yu fonksiyon olarak görüyoruz. Nereden? 1, 2, n kümesinden r'ye giden fonksiyonlar olarak görüyorum. O zaman U ile V'nin iç çarpımı da şöyle yazılabilir. Bu fonksiyonların K'da aldığı değerleri çarpıp topluyorum. Peki elimde fonksiyonlar varsa F ve G diye bunlar R'den R'ye gidiyor. O zaman bunların iç çarpımını da şöyle tarif edebilir miyiz? F çarpı G şu olacak. Bütün değerlerinde bunları değil mi? Toplayayım. Ee, ama bu ifade biraz sakıncalı. Neden? Çünkü R uncountable bir set. Uncountable toplum, toplamlarda e, convergent olmaz. E, eğer hani ee, hemen hemen hepsi terimlerin sıfırdı ise uncountable tanesi sıfırdan farklıysa o zaman bu toplam anlamlı değil. Ee, aslında tam da bu nedenlerden dolayı değil mi? İntegral diye bir şey tarif etmişiz. Şöyle tarif edebiliriz bunu. Ee, bu e, wouldn't work. Instead use inner product use integral yani şöyle f ile g'nin iç çarpımını şöyle tarif edeceğiz f of x ile g of x'in değerlerini çarpacağız nereden nereye r üzerinde ama bu da çok anlamlı değil bu sefer de yani integral improper bir integral oluyor Bizim durumumuzda dikkat ederseniz şeylerimiz, fonksiyonlarımız 2 L ile periyodikti. Yani dikkat ederseniz eksi L'den L'ye bu fonksiyonun grafiği neyse, yani fonksiyon her neyse tabii şöyle olması lazım. Fonksiyon geri kalan 
yerde de bunun aynısı olacak. Ne yapacağım? Bunu copy paste de alacağım. Yanına yapıştıracağım. Yanına yapıştıracağım. Dolayısıyla fonksiyonu sadece eksi l l arasında bilmeniz yeterli. E öyleyse yani fonksiyonu eksi l l aralığı belirliyorsa o zaman ben bu integrali sadece eksi l'den l'ye alsam yeterli. O yüzden de e, bu inner product'ı böyle tarif edeceğiz. Okay. Uh, the inner product on V is defined uh, as işte şöyle F çarpı G eşittir integral from uh, minus L to L f of x g of x dx Peki uh, I have uh, bu uh, peki is this really an inner product Well, uh, we have to check the conditions. Nedir inner product'ın uh, koşulları? Uh, bir kere yani lineer olması lazım. Uh, it must be yani şöyle diyeyim uh, c1 f1 c2 f2 inner product g must be right uh, c1 times f1 times g plus c2 times f2 times g Right? It must be linear. Uh, it must be this is a real inner product. It must be symmetric. F times G should be G times F. And the third one it must be positive. So <coughs> F dot F which is norm F squared should be positive and uh, F dot <coughs> f is zero uh, if and on if f is zero. Okay, otherwise uh, it shouldn't be zero, right? These are the conditions for an <coughs> inner product. All right, now let's check all these uh, proof. The first one is really easy, but let's do for the sake of completeness. C1 times F1, C2 times F2, inner product with G. What is this? This is just minus L to L, C1 F1, C2 F2, X times G of X DX. Here, of course, I am assuming that, you know, these functions, uh, They are not just uh, periodic functions, but they are, uh, you know, integrable functions. Uh, uh, otherwise, you know, these things wouldn't make sense. Uh, you may consider, for example, you know, uh, all these functions to be piecewisely uh, continuous functions. They don't have to be continuous, but piecewise continuity is enough. Okay, now what is this? Well, this is of course just C1 times minus L to L, F1 times G, okay, F1x, G of X, DX, plus C2 times the same thing, right? F2x, uh, GX, DX. So this is just C1 times F1 times G, plus C2 times F2 times G. 
Uh, the second condition is trivial. I mean, f dot g is just f of x g of x dx. Of course, that is just you know this. So this is g times f. Third condition is that uh, f dot f has to be non-negative f dot f what is this well this is zero no sorry minus l to l uh, f of x times f of x dx well this is just minus l to l f x squared dx this is a non-negative fun function right it is never zero sorry it is never negative Integral of a non-negative function is, of course, uh, non-negative. Right? Because the graph is always about the x-axis, and this is, uh, you know, non-negative. And uh, assume now f dot f is zero. Okay. Well, it means this gadget is zero. I must show that f of x is zero. Here, uh, you know, for simplicity, I will assume that f is continuous. Uh, so must show f of x to be is zero for all x. For simplicity, assume that f is continuous. What I will do is the following. <coughs> uh, let h of x to be the following function. Integral from minus l to x f squared x dx sorry f squared t dt since f is continuous this is a differentiable function since f is continuous by assumption h is differentiable Differentiable and h prime x is just h prime x is just f squared x, right? Integral of, I mean, uh, uh, derivative of this with respect to x is equal to this by the fundamental theorem of calculus. On the other hand, we have the following. On the other hand, you see, I have this zero equals minus L to L F squared T DT, right? This is zero. But what is this? This is just minus L to X F squared T DT plus X to L F squared T DT. Well, uh, these are both non-negative numbers because f squared is positive and the sum of these two non-negative numbers is equal to zero. This implies both of them to be zero. In particular, h of x, which is this expression, is zero. And this is zero for all x. In particular, it's a constant function. It's a constant function. And what about its derivative then? Well, its derivative has to be zero for all x. But what is h prime? h prime was f of f squared x. Hence, 
f squared x which is h prime x is 0 for all x uh, thus the function f of x is 0 okay all right uh, let me stop here uh, so hence uh, th therefore let me write also this therefore <coughs> uh, this v with this inner product is a uh, inner product space okay let me stop here